In our previous lesson, we learnt how the continent of Africa was called the Dark Continent for many years, particularly by the Europeans. This was mostly because in the earlier times, the continent was not discovered and it was not exposed to the outside world. However, due to technological advancements over the years, the European explorers and the European colonizers were able to enter into the continent and finally the continent was discovered. In this process, there were many important and famous explorers that helped in the exploration of the continent in the first place. We all must have heard about the very famous explorer Vasco da Gama. Who haven't heard about him? So here is the picture of Vasco da Gama. Now Vasco da Gama was a Portuguese explorer and he came from the continent of Europe. So he too made many voyages to different parts of the world. In one such voyage, with the aim to discover the subcontinent, he passed along the southern coast of the African continent. So the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama's voyages to India or the subcontinent opened up sea route from Western Europe right here to the eastern side through the Cape of Good Hope. So the Portuguese explorers started from Lisbon, that is a place in the Iberian Peninsula of the European continent. Then he sailed all around the continent of Africa and finally reached India or the subcontinent right here in Cochin. Though his voyages to the subcontinent was not promising in the initial years, later it helped the subcontinent to enter or integrate with the economy of the current world. Now in this process of discovering the subcontinent, he also discovered or crossed the southernmost tip of the continent of Africa which is now known as the Cape of Good Hope. So this voyage, though was not aimed to discover the continent of Africa, did initiate some interest in other explorers around the globe to discover the dark continent. Now it is often believed that the story of exploration is as old as the civilizations itself. The stories of the famous explorers that have helped in discovering the different parts of the world in the initial years have now become legendary. One of such legendary explorers is David Livingston. So David Livingston was a European explorer and he too contributed greatly in the exploration of the African continent. Now, in the process of exploring the continent, he was the first European explorer to discover the spectacular waterfalls. Do you know which waterfalls are we talking about? The Victoria Waterfalls. Now, why do you think the Victoria Falls was given that name? Well, since he was a European, he named the falls after Queen Victoria. So David Livingston discovered the spectacular waterfall in Africa and named it the Victoria Falls after Queen Victoria. Now David Livingston was not able to discover the spectacular falls all at once. He had to traverse the southern portion of the continent for a number of times and for a very long time when he finally discovered the Victoria Falls. So here we have mapped his journey of exploration of the continent of Africa. So the very first journey made to the continent of Africa was done from the southern portion where he entered the continent of Africa. It was followed by crossing the continent from the western coast across the southern portion to the eastern coast. Then it was followed by the Zimbabwe expedition. The Zimbabwe expedition was the one where he finally discovered the Victoria Falls as the Victoria Falls is located in the Zimbabwe river. But he did not stop there. He carried on with his voyages and his exploration by going on for the quest of the Nile river. So the quest of the Nile river was another significant journey he made in the continent of Africa in exploring the longest river of the world. 
So we see that David Livingston had greatly influenced and contributed to the discovery of the dark continent or the continent of Africa as we know today. Now here we have some glimpses from the early days where we see the meeting of Livingston to Stanley. Now who is Stanley? Well, just like Livingston, Stanley is another famous European explorer who contributed in the discovery of Africa or in its opening up to the outer world. Here we have a picture or the glimpse of the Victoria Falls during that time and these two show you the voyages of Livingston during his exploration or discovering of the continent. So besides David Livingston, there were two other important and famous European explorers that helped the continent of Africa in opening up to the outside world. So who were these? They were Henry Morton Stanley and Mungo Park. So these two famous European explorers helped the continent of Africa and the people here to be exposed to or integrate with the outside world, thus giving African continent further opportunities of development. Now after being explored by the explorers, it was colonized by the European colonizers. So the European colonizers were finally able to capture places and parts of the continent and settle down there. But from the map it is quite evident that almost all of them were settled along the coast of the African continent. But why do you think that even though the continent has such vast land area that the people were settling only along the coast? This is because of the harsh climate and the natural complex geographical feature of the continent that did not allow further penetration of the explorers or of the settlers who came from the outside world. So people from across the globe came to settle into this newly discovered continent and these included the French who you can see mostly settled along the western coast followed by the Spanish who were able to settle down mostly in the northern portion near the Mediterranean coast and the coast of Gulf of Guinea. We also have the English and Turkish who settled along the coast of the Gulf of Guinea and the coast of Mediterranean and Red Sea respectively. There were also other settlers during the early years of discovery of the continent of Africa which included the Dutch, the Portuguese and also the Danish. So we see not one, not two, but there were a number of settlers from across the planet that came to settle into this new world and find new opportunities of trade and commerce. So we just saw that in the early years of discovery, the Europeans mostly settled along the coasts of Africa. So here we have a depiction of how the early Europeans came to settle along the coast of Africa. On the other hand, we also have a picture that shows us a glimpse of one of the meetings between Livingston and Stanley, the two famous explorers that contributed a lot in the discovery of Africa. Even though in the earlier years of discovery, the Europeans were not able to penetrate deep into the continent, they were later able to do that with the help of technological advancements like the introduction of compass and quadrant. So after being able to penetrate deep into the continent with the help of technological advancements and medical advancements, the Europeans were able to invade, annex and then colonize almost the entire continent. Now it was not one but there were around seven major powers that colonized parts of the continent and exploited the people there. So these seven major European powers included the Spanish, Belgians, French, Portuguese, British, Italian, German and, and there was only a very small portion of the continent that was free of any colonization. So we see that almost the entire continent was colonized by the Europeans and this included the seven major powers. Well, this period was named as the scramble for power. 
so there was a fight to rule over or colonize the african continent between the seven major powers it is believed that the continent was colonized for 80 years that is from 1881 to 1914 so for around 80 years the continent was colonized by these seven major powers now because of the presence of such varied colonizers the continent also got its diversity in language and culture so before we proceed with our lesson could you help me answer this simple question the period during which Africa remained colonized by the seven major powers was known as the struggle for power the scramble for power or the african colonization yes we just learned that this period was known as the scramble for africa where seven major european powers were fighting to annex colonize and rule over the people of africa It was not until 1945 that the wave of African independence began. So it was after 1945 or more specifically at around 1949 that the countries of African continent eventually and one by one started gaining independence. So in this process we see that not all the countries got independent at once. but they got independence one by one so we see that the process of independence was not of a short duration but it extended up to 1980 and finally all the countries of african continent were able to gain independence from the european colonizers so at present after all the countries have gained independence or most of them the continent of africa comprises of 54 countries and four dependencies so on this map we can see most of the countries of africa with four dependencies including the western sahara saint helena reunion that is under france and also mayotte which is also under france so besides these four dependencies there are 54 countries of africa and it is believed that most of the countries here have a democratic setup that is they have a right to vote that means that the people of africa have the right to vote and choose their own government so we see that even after such long years of colonization and exploitation the country is now emerging to stand pace to pace with the current global countries now if you wish to check on all the countries of africa and see their capitals then you can click on the link below and access the i dictionary feature now besides all that this is a map here of that shows us some of the most important countries of africa and also the most densely populated ones so the most densely populated countries of africa include morocco egypt nigeria drc or the democratic republic of congo kenya ethiopia zimbabwe and south africa so all these countries are some of the most densely populated countries of africa and are also most important ones Now the after effects of the colonization is still visible as parts of the sub-Saharan region and Ethiopia are still struggling from development and basic necessities. People still have to traverse long distances in the search of water. Now even after such struggle the continent has lived up to the expectations of the world because of its natural beauty. The continent has a unique diversity of flora and fauna. It also is a place and a huge reserve of many important minerals and these play a very important role in the development of the country. So in this lesson we were able to understand how the continent of Africa was explored by some important European explorers including David Livingstone, Stanley and Park. We further understood how David Livingstone was the first European explorer to discover the spectacular waterfall of Africa that is the Victoria Waterfalls on the Zimbabwe River. 
we then understood how the country was initially colonized by a number of european powers namely the seven major european powers but eventually over the years the countries of the continent was able to gain independence and at present there are around 54 countries and four dependencies of the continent of africa now because of such long struggle under extreme poverty and being unexposed to the outside world there are still many places of africa that are yet to develop and do not have access to basic amenities like ethiopia or sub-saharan region however the country is unique and beautiful in its own way with a diversified flora and fauna and is also a huge reserve of important minerals that only help in the development of the continent don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.